Christ in me Mystery of the gospel is Christ in me Christ in me So we started a beautiful, beautiful sermon last Sunday The flesh of Jesus wages war Amen The flesh of Jesus is waging war within your body all kinds of negative things and negative hormones whatever reason your dna is reacting badly because of your parents the family tree or because of your ignorance or because uh, you had a negative mindset you were fearful about something or because you had uh, stre you had so much of stress in life it could be our self uh, imposed uh, sickness it could be our ignorance it could be the genetics the make that the fallen Adam had passed on to all of us for so many reasons there is uh, 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 there are organs the body your organs are out of balance so how do we bring it to balance how do we come out of law of sin and death and into law of life and righteousness the day you made Jesus your Lord you are out of the cycle of law of sin and death and you are into the cycle of law of life and righteousness this can be effective in your body when you understand the revelation behind it when you understand the revelation all the spirit that is flowing the life that is flowing in your spirit it can come out of your body and flow into every cell of your body amen glory to God so it is very very essential so let us see the first uh, scripture the book of numbers chapter 11 I will show you first from the living Bible and then we will get into King James Version. Then the Egyptians who had come with them began to long for the good things of Egypt. This added to the discontent of the people of Israel and they wept. Amen. Amen. So let's go to King James Version, Numbers chapter 11, verse 4 onwards. Here in King James Version it says, And the mixed multitude. In Living Bible what it said? The Egyptians. The mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting and the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. <laughs> Looks like Indian food. <laughs> But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Verse number 7. And the manna was a, as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of delium, uh, something like a whitish yellow. And the people went about and gathered it and grounded it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was the taste of fresh oil. Amen. Very powerful. So what is this? Uh, last Sunday we started about the story of manna, right? God would drop manna every, every day for them to eat. So when the manna would come during the dew, in, in early morning dew, along with the dew, manna would fall. How was manna? It was something like a yellow, whitish, as a coriander seed. So they would take the coriander seed, they will crush it, they will put it in a mortar, they will put it in a mill, or you might have seen, right, in India, the olden Indian tradition, crushing it in a mortar and a stone, stone ground, uh, what is it called? Uh, what is that called? Stone ground um, mill. Something it has some name. <laughs> what is that? Chakli. It's, it's Chakki. Yeah, Chakki is Hindi word, no? Yeah, Hindi word. Okay, then uh, I use Hindi word itself. <laughs> Chakki. Okay, we said Chakki piece, na, right? Don't keep repeating the same thing again and again. <laughs> That's what I'm doing to you. <laughs> repeating it about Holy Communion so you get the truth. Amen? So, grind the um, seeds and make it into a bread. There is so much deeper meaning to it. It's bread that came from heaven and God wants us to crush it. 
God wants us to pound it. God wants us to put it in a mortar, like how the body and the blood of Jesus was crushed on the cross of Calvary. He was beaten. He was bruised, crushed. It says in the book of Hebrew, uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 10. It pleased Yahweh to crush him. It pleased God to crush him. That, that's my favorite verse. It says it pleased him to crush him. So every time I see that verse and I remember in my communion, I, I, I say, God, it pleased you to crush him so that I will not be crushed. I will not be crushed in my bones. I will not be crushed in my body. I will not be crushed in my mind. I don't have to go through agony because he was crushed on the cross of Calvary. So when he was crushed, what happened? When you crush the olives, you receive the juice out of it. You receive the oil out of it. Right? So, it, so when they crush it, they bake it, they roast it. So much deeper meaning. After making a cake, that's what, right? We take communion, the wafer, the uh, bread, the, which represents the body of Christ. It is baked. It is roasted. Why it is roasted? God's wrath came on Jesus on the cross of Calvary. That's what we celebrate crucifixion. He took all the sin of the world. So Jesus looked sin and God's wrath came on Jesus. When God's wrath came on Jesus, every offering in the Old Testament was consumed by the fire of God. Whenever they bought their offering on the altar, they brought their bull offering, they bought their ram offering, they bought their doves, every offering, grain offering, whenever they got the offering, the offering was burnt. The fire of the God would come from heaven and accept the offering. Similarly, it is the typology of Jesus. Jesus on the cross of Calvary, the, he took all the wrath of God, the fire of God came on Jesus, he was not consumed. He was rejected by God, yet hanging there. The only offering which was able to withstand the wrath of God. The perfect sacrifice. It beats any bull offering, any kind of Old Testament goats and bulls offering that they used to bring. The body and the blood of Jesus sustained the wrath of God and he was still hanging there saying, Father, forgive them. Father, I submit my spirit into your hands. Until then. So when, when, when you eat the roasted bread during your communion, you remember that the, Lord, the Father God crushed him. Father God made him to go through the beatings. Father God gave him as a sacrifice. Father God roasted him. That means the wrath of God came on him and the judgment was passed in my place. Yet Jesus sustained the judgment. Now I receive the communion like a fresh oil. What is it? The fresh oil is Jesus was there in garden of Gethsemane, which represents olive press. Gethsemane means what? It's an olive press where olives were taken and crushed to make into oil. So basically it is a typology saying Jesus was crushed so that he could give out his blood. He could give out his oil of anointing. That is why Christ is in us. What is the meaning of Christ? Christ is not the last name. Christ means the anointed one. The entire anointing of the fullness Godhead bodily is in him. So Jesus was crushed so that his anointing is poured on us and poured in us. That is why we say Christ in us. So God gave them this manna to eat. This has so much of deeper meaning. So Old Testament, uh, the message of Jesus is concealed, right? In New Testament, it is revealed. So so they didn't know the meaning and what they did in verse number 6. They got bored. Verse 4 says the mixed multitude. Mixed multitude. Who are this mixed multitude? They got bugged. What they told this mixed multitude. Go to verse number 5. This mixed multitude. They said we remember the fish which we did eat in the Egypt freely. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlics. Verse 6. But now our strength is gone. And day after day we have to face this manna. What a confession. Look at this. In, in King James Version it says, But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. 
this complaint was given by mixed multitude, not by children of Israel. What is this mixed multitude? Probably they were half Israel and half Egyptian. They had done mixed marriage or probably they were Egyptians because in living Bible it translates as Egyptians. When they saw the miracles, sometimes people see miracles and they want to follow God. But they don't have relationship. Oh, Jesus blessed me today. I want to follow him for some time until everything feels good. Emotionalism, no commitment. So the mixed multitude were that category. So they come, the mixed multitude, uh, the Bible says in the book of Numbers, this mixed multitude were not happy. They were the Egyptians who escaped probably, in the, they were the slaves, the other neighboring slaves, probably other Canaanites, Ites, Hittites, other slaves who were in Egypt. They took the advantage that all the slaves are coming out. We will also act like we are uh, Israelites and Hebrews and we come out. Probably they are that uh, slaves or they are Egyptians who saw the ten plagues and they were wonder stuck. Amazing, what amazing God they serve. But they didn't make him their Lord. They, they got carried away. Oh, God has blessed me. I found some new culture, new tradition, emotionalism. Carried away and they came. This mixed multitude could also be intermarriage. That is why it's so important that you marry a person who knows God's word for all the young people. See, when you marry a person who does not uh, appreciate God, appreciate God's word, it becomes mixed multitude because that person eventually will not honor your God. They will come for blessings. They will come uh, to see what God can give them. They are always looking at his hand. They're not looking at his heart. They're not looking at his face. And if you, if you, ha if you become mixed multitude by inter, uh, ma intermarriage, because the Bible uh, says that you must marry the one who believes in the word of God. You cannot be unequally yoked, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. So we cannot be unequally yoked. Why? If they are mixed multitude, then what they do? They try to find faults with the ways of God. They try to find faults with the things of church. They try to find faults with what you believe in according to the word of God. So it's very, very essential that you marry a person and you are not a mixed multitude. And they said, our soul is dried. That is why God told Holy Communion is for the children not to the Egyptians, not to mixed multitude. It is to the children. They say, my soul is dried. They confess their soul is dried. They confess our strength is gone. So what happened? They received what they confessed. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. They died. After that, the wrath of anger came and all those people who were asking, send us onion, leeks and garlic, food, fish, God is not against you eating good food. He created them for you to eat. But then it says they lusted after it. Did you sh 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 see that verse 4? Show them verse 4. It says this mixed multitude among them fell a lusting. In English Bible it says lusting. When you see that in Greek, uh, in Hebrew, Old Testament is in Hebrew, it has more deeper meaning. What is the deeper meaning? It is strong desire, strong craving earnest hunger this lusting is this same word is used in the book of genesis when adam and eve saw that fruit it says it seemed to be a delight to their eyes so they fell for those three things lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and pride of life similarly that same word is used here so they are going by carnality they are going by what they experience, what they see. They are not able to revere the food that came from heaven. They wanted something sore, something that stings. Your mouth stings after eating garlic, onion. They wanted this, not manna. Can you understand? They want to go back to carnality. God has raised them to spirituality. Now, don't misunderstand my message. I'm not saying you should not eat uh, <laughs> all these uh, things. What uh, I'm trying to bring in from this uh, portion is they took lightly the provision of God, the manna. I'm going, I'm driving a point. Very, very important. Uh, the next, what I'm going to say, concentrate. When it says the mixed multitude, they are the fake brethren that 
Paul talks about in the book of Galatians. He talks in the epistles. He says, beware of fake brethren. What does that mean? Brethren are the brothers who are in Christ. They are in the church. So Paul says, beware of fake brethren. That means they are not real brethren. They are not having covenant with God. They have come carried away to create confusion. They have come to lead you away from God. Fake brethren, mixed multitude. And this mixed multitude, what happens just like when one frog crocks, all the other frogs will join, <laughs> right? <laughs> so everybody started to crock and a group, a group came together and they detested the food of God. So the punishment of God came upon them. This portion, I want to relate to New Testament portion, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven. Now many people in the body of Christ, they fear to take communion. They say, I cannot take communion every Sunday. I have to take communion only once in a year or once in a month. I am not supposed to take communion. Why? Because you cannot take it lightly. So they don't understand the meaning. I just want to explain. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of Lord. It says unworthy manner. It does not say unworthy man, everybody. Unworthy man. You will think I am unworthy man if I touch Holy Communion. Because it says examine yourself. There's a more deeper meaning. I don't want to get into that. Uh, when we study uh, uh, the Greek of it, God says that you judge yourself, not with sin conscience. Judge yourself with sun conscience. So when you're eating something, when you're eating especially the word of God, you're eating Holy Communion, you focus on sun, focus on what Jesus paid, not on your sin. If you're going to focus on your sin, you'll be so guilty that you will not be able to take communion. And that's a wrong uh, culture when someone says, do not touch the communion if you have sinned this week. This Sunday, make sure that you don't touch the communion. That never comes from the pulpit here. I don't say that. You should take communion because if you're struggling in sin, you're struggling with sickness, you need a doctor. And Jesus is the great physician. So if you're staying away from physician, you're going to become more sick. So nobody can clean you. You're a sheep. Your shepherd has to clean you. So you have to receive with humility. So you, un, it's not talking about unworthy man. It's talking about unworthy manner. Now, unworthy manner and in the book of Numbers, what, how, how is it correlated? Um, uh, I, I was inspired to correlate this to show you because Old Testament is a typology. In Old Testament, they took lightly. They said, what is this manna? Every day we have to eat this manna meaning not honoring the body and the blood of Jesus, saying that every Sunday we have to take Holy Communion. What is this? Every message pastor will talk only about Jesus, Holy Communion, finished work of the Lord. Kindly do not take it lightly because the entire Bible, Genesis to Revelation, is one single message. It is the message of the Son. It is unveiling Jesus. It is Jesus personified in the body and the blood of Jesus, the Spirit of God, the Holy God personified in the body and the blood of Jesus. So Genesis to Revelation, it is just painting one beautiful picture. It is picture of the Son. So what can we preach other than the Son of God? Amen? So when you're taking communion, do it in worthy manner. Do it in, what is that worthy manner? Honoring the body and the blood. It says, discern the Lord's body. So discern, this body was broken for me. This blood was shed for me. It's a fresh oil. I like that word in uh, numbers, show them. It says fresh oil. Why it says fresh oil? Every time you take holy communion, it is not old oil. It is not 2,023 years ago, Jesus died, it is gone, the miracle is over, healing is over. Every time you take communion, it's a fresh oil. It's as if Jesus is just dead. In the book of Revelation, when John saw Jesus on the island of Patmos, when he got the revelation, 
He said, I saw the one who is worthy to open the scroll. I turned around to see there were 24 elders bowing before him, angels, all multitudes of angels singing holy and holy. And there were four living creatures moving in front of the throne. And I saw someone looking like the lion, yet he is the lamb, as though he's just slain, freshly slain, blood dripping, not dried up. Why? It is fresh blood. It's not dried up. It just happened. That means every time you receive Jesus as your Lord, it's just happened. Your children, your grandchildren, 20 years, 30 years from now, when they make Jesus the Lord, it's just sacrifice happened to them. Amen? Because he's a living God. It's not past tense. Bible is not in past tense or in future tense. Why? Because he is living God, he is living waters, he is living word, and he is living bread. It is now bread. So when you take, it is fresh oil, fresh blood, fresh food. When you take that, it freshly enters the fresh food, what it does to your body. The fresh medicine, not expired medicine. The fresh medicine, what it does, it goes with power and heals your every cell. So when you're taking communion, please believe that it is the fresh oil. And I am not taking it lightly. Oh, what is this communion? Every day I have to take, every Sunday I have to take. No, I honor this communion. I value this communion. I am not of a mixed multitude. I am born of God. I have relationship with my God. I honor my elder brother. I honor my daddy God. I am God kind and I value what he has given to me. So you take that with that reverence. You take that with that uh, complete mindset that, Daddy God, this is your fresh oil for healing to my bones. Fresh oil for healing to my mind. It is fresh anointing oil for me, Daddy God, to cleanse every bad memory. For me to forget my past. This is hell. This is my food. So take that. Let's not be of the mixed multitude. Because this mixed multitude, uh, in the book of Psalms 78, it says why the punishment came so severely on them that they died. You can go home and read entire Numbers 11. So in Psalm 78, it says, you, you, you can read that in Psalm 78, verse 18 and 19. It says that they tested God in their heart. By asking for the food of their fancy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Amazing. Table in the wilderness. So we are living here on earth, right? It's like wilderness. People going through sickness, pain, difficulty, lost relationships, depression, sorrow, poverty. Wilderness. Where there is no help. Self-help does not work. No motivational speaker can help. So it says, can God prepare a table in wilderness? Questioning God for solution. Questioning God for healing. Questioning God for you, for, for the problems to be solved. That's the attitude. So God is encouraging you. God is not trying to condemn the message is not to condemn. The message is not to bring in fear to take Holy Communion in reverence. Absolutely not. Fearing God in a wrong manner will make you run away from God. Like Adam, he went and hid himself. You will run away from God. When you have right fear, that is reverential fear, fear out of love, it will make you to obey God. When you love God, you will run to him and hug him like your daddy God, like your father, like your best friend. So it says he prepares a table. He has prepared a table in the presence of our enemies. What is the table the Lord prepared for us? The table of holy communion. On the table he served the body and the blood. On the table, what is there? The main dish on the menu. His righteousness. The body and the blood is what? His doing. It is not my works for salvation. On the table is his doing. On the table is his salvation. Complete provision. Complete healing. Complete restoration. It is Lord's doing. 
believe Lord's doing, for you to bring the proposal, for you to bring that right partner in your life. It is Lord's doing. It is not your doing. Amen. So the table is prepared. Believe the table is prepared prepared. Amen. So when you take the communion, take it is fresh oil, fresh blood, fresh food. Receive it for healing. Amen. Very, very, very important. The book of Elisha. I have so much to tell you. Let's quickly uh, get into the story of Elisha, the, uh, the uh, stew which was corrupted. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the kings. Elisha purifies the pot of stew. And Elisha returned to Gilgal. And there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said to his servant, put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild wine. And gathered from it a lap full of wild gods. And came and sliced them into the pot of stew though he, they did not know what they were. Then they served it to the men to eat. Now it happened as they were eating the stew that they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot and they could not eat eat. Uh, so he said, then bring some flour and he put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people that they may eat and there was nothing harmful in the pot. Amen. Very, very powerful story. I'm sure as I read you, you, you were able to relate. The story is like Elisha prepares the table. He prepares food for his uh, prophets, his friends. So when they go and get a wild herb, the wild herb was poisonous. So the wild herb was put and they cooked the stew. They cooked the food and when people started to eat that food, they, they, the, the prophets they started to die and they run to him and they say there is uh, death in the pot. Death in the pot. Very beautiful. If some of you remember the message Pastor Abraham had taken on this, death in the pot. Very, very powerful. So what is the death in the pot? Your pot represents to your belly your stomach. There can be death in the pot. That means there's something wrong with your organs, something wrong with your hormones, something wrong in your pancreas, kidneys, stomach ulcers, stomach illnesses, intestine issues, skin problems, liver issues, whatever is the problem in the pot that is in the stomach. What, the, what was the solution? Elisha said, then, show them the previous, uh, okay, show them 41. Then he said, so, he said, then bring some flour. Amen, amen. Bring some flour. This message, it transformed my life. You know, this message. Uh, when I saw this message, when they told me probably there is something wrong in the blood, so the blood is fighting against, there is some problem in the stomach. We don't know what is the problem. I just took this scripture. I said, there is death in the pot, right? That's what I had experienced. So there is death in the pot. I said, the solution to this is, then bring me some flour. Bring me the meat, the body, and the blood of Jesus. Amen? The flesh of Jesus, the meat of God, the flesh of Jesus. Bring me the flesh of Jesus, the body and the blood of Jesus. Take that body and the blood of Jesus. The death is no longer there. This is the deeper meaning that when we take it, take it with the reverence to receive the healing. And today I want to show you a very, very beautiful way to receive communion. That's my last portion for today, Leviticus chapter 7. Last portion for today. Very beautiful scripture. I'll, I'll read this and explain it to you. For the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the heave offering, I have taken from the children of Israel, from the sacrifices of their peace offering, and I have given them to Aaron, the priest, and to his sons from the children of Israel by a statue forever. Verse 34. This is the consecrated portion. Please. Tell that after me. This is a consecrated portion for Aaron and his sons from the offerings made by fire to the Lord on the day when Moses presented them to, a minister, to minister to the Lord as priest. Next verse. The Lord commanded this to be given to them by the children of Israel on the day that he anointed them by a statue forever. 
throughout their generations. What is this? God told, take the, verse 34, God told, take the breast portion of the wave offering and the thigh of the heap offering and give it to Aaron and his sons. I told you, Old Testament is a concealed matter, right? So New Testament is the revealed matter throughout, if you see the, the sermons that I've preached. Whenever it says about the breast portion, it's talking about the bosom of Jesus. Amen? The bosom of the beloved. Leaning on the beloved. Very, very important. When you know Jesus is your beloved, when you lean on the beloved, you understand that he loves you. Jesus, who leaned on the in the Last Supper, you remember in the Last Supper, John, when Jesus was with, the, uh, with the, the disciples, Jesus was breaking the bread. So John was there in the midst of them. What John was doing? He was leaning on the bosom of Jesus. He said, Jesus' heart is mine. <laughs> I hear his heartbeat. So what is this deeper meaning? God told when you bring the offering... You bring the meat, when you bring the bull offering, when you bring the sheep offering, when you bring the meat, take the meat, give the parts, other parts to the people of Israel, whoever is bringing the offerer, the breast portion alone, the breast portion of the wave offering and thigh portion of the heaf offering, take the breast and the thigh and give it to Aaron and his sons. Who is Aaron? Aaron was the high priest. Amen? And his sons. Who is our high priest today in the New Testament? Jesus is our high priest in the New Testament. So the breast portion, the love of God, the only begotten son he was until we all were born again. The only begotten son, father loved him so much and he gave him up to us. So the love of the father was given to us. So his son, Jesus, who is the high priest. And because of the high priest, we are his sons. The sons of God. The breast portion alone, let Jesus eat. And the breast portion alone should be given to the sons. That is you and I. Forgiven generation. The sons of God. So we must eat the breast portion. So when we eat the breast portion, what are we eating? We are eating the love of God. We are eating the heart of God. We are eating the flesh of God. He said this portion is consecrated to the high priest and his sons. So what is that portion? When you take holy communion, you are not taking it in an unworthy manner. Now, you are saying, God, I receive your heart. I eat your love. When I take communion, I am receiving his love. When I eat communion, which portion of the flesh I am eating? The heart of God. When you meditate, when you eat the love of God, when you lean on the bosom of Jesus, when you receive his love, every fear is casted out. Every sickness is casted out. You are worthy of this breast offering. Amen? Because you are the sons of God, the priest of most high God, and Jesus is the high priest. Now you understood that you eating the love of God. That's, what is eating love of God? Hearing to the messages of God's love for you. Now what you're doing? I'm telling God loved you so much, he gave you his heart. God loved you so much, he gave his beloved son. I'm telling you, God loved you so much that he gave you his fresh oil, fresh blood for you to be healed. You are loved of God. Now what you're doing? You're eating his love. You're eating the scroll. What part of the scroll? The breast part. That is his heart. Amen? Leaning on the beloved, you will come out of the wilderness. Amen? Very powerful message. It's there on YouTube. You can listen. Leaning on the beloved. So, you, what is the portion where it says, Aaron is eating. Now, this breast portion, Aaron has to eat. Why high priest Jesus has to eat now? Recently, I had uh, spoken to you about that. This breast portion of Jesus. In the book of John, you remember? Chapter 11, Jesus was tired and hungry. At that time, disciples told, we'll go to the uh, town and bring you some food. And Jesus says, okay, fine. So they all went and they brought 
food during their journey and they went and brought what the food jesus went in another direction <laughs> through a samaria village where there was a samaritan woman so this woman he met her she was she had five husband living with the sixth one who was not her husband all those uh, things that it just giving a picture to all of us that she was a sinful woman jesus came down to love her jesus came down to comfort her jesus came down to give her solution jesus came down to show her he came for her and she matters to him he loved her right he had conversation with her jesus striked the first conversation right give me some water how amazing how beautiful how wonderful our savior is he came your way he striked his first conversation he sent you the preacher he sent his word because he loves you amen so he came to that samaritan woman and he expressed his love to her after expressing her his love after sharing his valuable wisdom to her after loving her then when his disciples came and said do you want to eat something he said i already had my meat i ate my food they say did someone get some food to him what food he ate so what is the meaning of that john 11 42 what's the meaning of that the meaning of that is when jesus loves you that is when he is eating the breast portion he is giving you his heart he loves you when he loves you this is the meat to do the will of my father that's what he said what is my meat my meat is to do the will of my father my meat so the flesh of jesus that he gave to you he broke his flesh he ripped it apart he broke and took out his heart and gave it to you because he loved you he didn't rest until he loved you amen right on the sabbath day in the in the book of genesis you remember in the book of genesis god created everything and said he rested on the seventh day and immediately adam and eve got into sin and thereafter god did not rest until jesus loved the whole world and god said i love the world so that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son when he loved you when he gave his sacrifice for you that is when he ate the breast portion so in that love in that offering you know what your it includes your healing it includes any any sickness to be completely reverted it includes all your past memories to be erased it includes your forgiveness it includes your restoration it includes your prosperity whatever money you have lost whatever that you're waiting for your marriage your relationships to be restored everything it included when he gave every drop of his blood the fresh oil when he poured that in the garden of gethsemane he was crushed in his mind he went through a agony it says he went through agony so that you don't have to go through agony he loved you he loved me much so that i can love him and others much amen so this is the breast of god this is the heart of god so when you're taking communion it is not a simple act taking it lightly not honoring his love not honoring his sacrifice not honoring his word not honoring him is unworthy manner that is unworthy manner if you have you're struggling with sin you're struggling with some addiction you're struggling to renew your mind you still do not know then come to him receive him and this communion is not for the mixed multitude it is what do i mean mixed multitude it is for anyone who has made jesus his lord do not be a mixed multitude be part of the family I want to encourage those of you who have not made Jesus your lord make him your lord he loves you much receive his love today when you say i don't want jesus i don't want communion you know what you're saying i reject the heart of god you say i don't want his heart i i take lightly his heart and you go hungry for others heart and you go give your heart to others who will only take it crush it and throw it <laughs> give your heart to jesus and receive his heart i pray for all those who are 
watching me or listening to me receive the heart of god god loves you receive his love for you receive his breast offering receive the heart of god make him your lord if you make jesus your lord say it slowly underneath your breath daddy god thank you for jesus thank you for giving me your heart thank you for loving me so much i will not take it lightly i am not like the mixed multitude i want to be your son i want to be your child i make jesus my lord i believe god sent him to die for me so that i can live my life and he rose again on the third day jesus was risen on the third day along with me i receive his provision i receive his sacrifice i receive the heart of god thank you jesus a man if you have made that prayer you have made jesus your lord and you have received the heart of god amen the lord has blessed you the lord has lifted his countenance on you the lord is gracious to you you shall always be the head and not the tail you shall always be above and never below no evil shall come near your dwelling no sickness can stay in your body your children are mighty in the land you are growing and flourishing like a palm tree in all seasons at all times no giant no giant, Jericho wall no red sea can ever stand before you you are crossing them you are going and entering your promised land as you take in a worthy manner the communion the flesh of Jesus waging war in your pot in your belly in your organs in your cells and you are becoming stronger younger healthier and more beautiful for the glory of the lord covenant of increase is established as you receive the body and the blood of jesus the love of the father the grace of our lord jesus christ and the sweet communion of the holy spirit is always with us now and forevermore amen shalom Christ is in you. Amen. We believe you were blessed by this message. Our vision is to make known the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you. You can be a blessing by partnering with Priya Abraham Ministries to share this good news. To partner, visit priyaabraham.org/partner.